My invisible friends, hello and welcome back to our series on electrical engineering. This is a very short video dedicated to my LEC 342 students who before the exam are trying to remember how to use semi-log paper. In a semi-logarithmic paper plot, the vertical axis is a linear in our case that would be the flux density in Tesla's, but the horizontal axis is given as a logarithm, logarithm of the magnetic field, log 10 of h. If we mark the logarithm of h, of course, we will have a linear scale, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, those are logarithms of h. But it is practice not to write the logarithm of h like that, but write to a, write h. We write instead of logarithm, of h is 0. No, we write just a 1. The logarithm of 1 is 0. Instead of writing all oh, the logarithm of h is 1 on the top, we say no, the logarithm h is 1, h is 10. So we write h knowing that what we mean is logarithm of. Logarithm of 10, logarithm of 100, logarithm of 1k. That makes sense. When we think in terms of logarithm of h, the horizontal axis is linear again. But if we write that in terms of h, it is a logarithmic axis. The vertical axis is a linear one and contains a flux density in Teslas. The distance between two frequencies that are away by a factor of 10, like um, 100,000 and 10,000, is only one decade. That is called one decade. The distance between two frequencies for which the logarithms are one unit away, that is one decade. To know how many decades are there between any two frequencies, subtract the logarithm of one minus the logarithm of the other. Imagine we want to know how many decades away are a hundred and a hundred thousand. Well, you say the logarithm of a hundred thousand, that is five, minus the logarithm of a hundred, that is two. 5 minus 2, that is 3 decades away. So it is true. The distance in decades between 100 and 100,000 is 3 decades. So when we take logarithms of h, we are in a linear scale again. In general, the distance in decades between any two values of the magnetic field h is the logarithm of one minus the logarithm of the other. It goes without saying, not only multiples of 10. But you and I know that the logarithm of a minus logarithm of b is the logarithm of a divided by b. So this is another way of computing the number of decades between any two values of the magnetic field h in amps per meter. I have a question for you now. What kind of a curve is this on this semi-logarithmic paper? Remember that the horizontal axis is log h. Well, if it's log h, what we have there is a straight line. It is a straight line, and what is the slope? You tell me, what is the slope of that straight line on the semi-logarithmic paper? You say, hmm, the slope is 17. 17, what are the units of that slope? The units would be 17 teslas per decade. That is the slope. 17 teslas per decade. Every time we advance one decade to the right on the horizontal axis of h, the flux density goes up in 17 Teslas. And there's that. Let's see now what we do with that. Let's say we have the magnetization curve of a ferromagnetic material, that the one that I'm showing here, or the table on the right that was measured directly from the curve. The horizontal axis is logarithmic, h in amps per meter. The same, the first column of the table is in reality logarithmic. But if we need to interpolate, we need to remember this. If we take the logarithm of the values of h, that axis becomes linear again. And we can use linear interpolation. So before interpolating, remember to trade h for log of h, and then you can use linear interpolation all over again. Let's do that with an example here. Let's say that we want to find what is the value for the flux density when h is 450 amps per meter. 
The temptation would be to say, well, 450 is halfway between 400 and 500. So, B at 450 should be halfway between 136 and 149. And that is the average of them. No, not really. What we need is to convert um, 400 and 500 and 450 into logarithms. And then we have linear interpolation. Please observe. Now, now we can interpolate between 136 and 141 linearly and get what is the value of x. Try that. Let's do it backwards. Now we go from b to h, and this is even more interesting. Let's take a zoom at part of the table, and suppose that the question is, we want to find what is the value of the magnetic field h that corresponds to a flux density of 1.56 teslas. Mm. That will be between 1,000 amps per meter and 2,000 amps per meter. Right, per meter. That's right. Uh, but it seems that because 156 is halfway between 154 and 158, so the temptation would be to say, oh, I know, the magnetic field has to be halfway between 1,000 and 2,000, has to be 1,500 amps per meter, right? Wrong. Because that that axis, the vertical one on the left, is non-linear, it's logarithmic. So we need to take the logarithm of 10,000, 10, of 1,000, the logarithm of, of 2,000. And then we can interpolate linearly to find y in the middle that corresponds to 156. That y will not be h. That y will be the logarithm of h. We take the anti-logarithm of that y and we get that the value of h is 1,400 amps per meter. Why different from the 1,500 that we thought it was? And that is all, my students. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next video.